Podman desktop. A little bit about Podman, but mainly about Podman desktop. So uh, that's the. So Podman desktop was announced as version 1.0 uh, for uh, just a few weeks ago. And uh, it was, we were all sweating the, <laughs> the week before because <gasps> it has to work. So uh, it's a very young app, let's say that. We are building fe features like crazy in it. And when you build one feature, another one is broken. Uh, very often, but it's, it starts to be really usable to do, uh, to do uh, nice things. So why, 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 why Podman Desktop? Uh, it's, um, so how to explain that? It's that for, uh, for, uh, for production, you want to have uh, your containers running on Kubernetes or OpenShift most often, and uh, uh, in uh, development environments, people are more using uh, Docker, Docker Compose, and uh, other things that, that are just, okay, they are containers, but they are not working the same way. And, uh, and uh, your container works on development, and then it doesn't work on production. That's sad. And that's a very nice uh, picture explaining it by, by, by one colleague. So, that's the idea, is, is uh, okay, Docker Compose and Kubernetes YAML, that's not the same. Uh, let's try to give a tool to developers to uh, produce the Kubernetes YAML and make it simple to produce. Um, and that's why it's not just Podman, is that there is one part of Podman desktop which is really using Podman, and the second part, which is bringing you from container engine to Kubernetes and or OpenShift, you choose. Um, I have a session this morning and one this afternoon. Uh, the main reason is that because uh, you are two people uh, applying for the sessions and the other person cannot come. So I will focus this session more on uh, what you can do with the container engine. And uh, this afternoon, I will not talk about the content engine, but try to focus more on uh, what kind of uh, Kubernetes workload and features we have. Um, so voilà. Uh, so one problem that we solve and that I didn't talk about is that uh, containers work natively on Linux. You know, it's uh, C groups and so it's features that are really uh, bound to the Linux kernel. And on uh, Windows and Mac, you need to uh, work in a Linux VM. And um, that makes it a little bit more complex to, so it's more complex to start with Podman and on, uh, on uh, Mac OS and Windows. And uh, the first thing that Podman desktop brings to Windows and Mac OS user is it's easy to start with uh, Podman. It's just you install Podman desktop and then you click, 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 and uh, you have everything working. For Linux users, we don't care. Uh, um, so it's not a really, really a feature, it's more a non-feature. And for example, I, I, I have been using Linux for 20 something years. And now I do this presentation on Windows because some of the features are specially baked for uh, Podman running in a, in a VM and not for Podman running on the host. Meaning that uh, uh, when I was testing on Linux, I had things that didn't work and the application is really, really, really meant for Windows and Mac OS first. And we have very few Linux users. And yes, so container engine. Uh, you see the little uh, compose here? So you can install compose on it. So you can run, you can run compose, but the interesting thing is that then from the, the container that you started by running uh, Docker compose, 
you can uh, continue and do something that we hope is, is, be is better. Huh. Um, yeah, so proxy, uh, proxy con connecting to registries and installing in a restricted environment, that's that's feature that we implemented uh, in um, December, January, February. So that's the first. It came e even f before connecting to Kubernetes, uh, this feature, is that uh, uh, if you are running uh, in a jail where you can don't have access to internet and you, yeah, we made this this feature first. So really, for people who want to run Podman desktop and Podman in a lockdown environment in enterprise, for most of the user who can who are working remote, it doesn't. It's not a feature, but for enterprise, it, it is. Um, and. You have a, a little, so you can choose between your Kubernetes context, and so in fact, natively you connect to uh, all the Kubernetes that are in your kube config. So if you already have clusters, they will they will show up here, and you can select in which context you are working. Um, and now. I have a lot of time for demos. Okay, so there are some demos that I don't do live because uh, it takes too much time. So, uh, but there are some that I want to do live. So this is how you uh, start uh, uh, the Podman machine in uh, in uh, Podman desktop. And I'm, I'm sorry, but if I, if I do the, this demo live, it will take uh, 10 minutes, and I, don't, I cannot show everything. So just, it's easy. Um, there are certain circumstances where you, so Podmine by TFO is running rootless. So it means that the, the uh, Podmine is, is started with, your, with a user, a basic user, not root. But in certain condition, you want to be running uh, uh, Podman as root, and there's, there is an option for that. And uh, uh, we made that for kind on Windows. So to run uh, kind on Windows, it works better if you have a, a rootful, uh, a, a rootful uh, Podman. Good. Uh, hopefully I can, I don't know, this afternoon, my kind, my kind, uh, my rootful uh, Podman machine didn't work yesterday, so I will not show it this afternoon unless I can fix it. Pulling an image. Let's see if the network is okay to the ear. So, pulling an image. I will delete the Redis image. <coughs> Pump, and I will try put an image. And I have my problem with Docker not accessible today. That's wonderful. If I'm, I like the live demos. You know, when you break things. Okay, so it doesn't work. I'm super happy. Okay.
when the gods of uh, registries are with you, pulling an image is super easy. So I've, I've never had uh, a Docker registry refusing to download an image before this morning in this room here. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's the big surprise. So, but yes, okay, so you can, you can download image from multiple registries. And, and uh, so when one registry is down, you, you can use another one. Uh, Quay is a cool registry for that. Um, next, next, next. So pulling an image. Um, starting a container. So I will not do the demo with the this redis because I, I, I killed it. Mais comment on change là? But let's take uh, Nginx. So to start a container from an image, you know from, so I don't know, if you use the command line, you know, a lot of command line, you put that in a script, etc. cetera. Uh, here you have, uh, you have a lot of options that are displayed in the, in the starter container. Uh, 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 screen, and um, usually these are things that you define in the image. For example, the, the port to expose, that's defined uh, in the image and you just have to, uh, to validate. You don't, you don't have to, to do anything and you should have something that works out of the box. And so now I have my Nginx working good. And I can interact with my container. Uh, when you go to the details, it's always open the log, first thing. Um, there is a summary, which is not the most interesting thing. In the, in the logs, if you click in the logs, uh, oh, control F doesn't work today. I know, if you do in, do in the inspect, if you click in the, in the content and you press Control F, you can search for things inside. That's a nice hidden feature. Uh, so that's, you can inspect the container. The cube, the cube thing is one of the, one of the One of the features I will talk more a, a little bit later. It's so from this container you can create a pod, and basically the definition of a pod is a, is a, a Kubernetes YAML. So when you create a container, you can directly have the the, the YAML content to create a pod out of your container, and you can interact with the with the container. And last thing, no, not exactly last thing, you can, uh, as the container is exposing a port, you can directly visualize what is on the, running on this port. When you're running Podman, that's, that's easy because it's localhost, the port. Um, when you are uh, running in uh, OpenShift, or Kubernetes that becomes a little bit more complex. And you can, uh, you have here a button to deploy to Kubernetes. And uh, the context here that you can see here, it's depending on the context that, it's, that, is, that, you, uh, that you activate here, okay? So here I can decide to, uh, to, uh, to uh, deploy to uh, OpenShift local, to developer sandbox. Uh, on OpenShift local, I have two profiles, and I have a, a MicroShift instance that doesn't exist anymore, but I can still choose it. Let's back to the, to the slide. No, no, starting a container. Uh, starting the Nginx container, uh, building an image from 
container file. Yes, let's do this. And normally, today, I am cheating a little bit. So here you can put another name. So you, you, are, you first have to choose a container file or a Docker file. So uh, um, most often it's, it's called a Docker file, but sometimes container file. Uh, then Podman Desktop will take your container file and all the all the directory that are around. So if you are copying files, your uh, Podman Desktop has, has, has all the context to uh, to do to do the build. Okay, we will see that in the logs. But I am, as I am cheating, it goes very fast. Okay, when when you when you build for the first time, it's actually uploading the build context can take uh, one minute or more because it's taking your take, taking the Docker file and the directory from your local file system, and it's copying that to the Podman machine, which is in a VM, and then and then the build is starting, and. Um, here, I'm cheating because the, it's already built, so I'm using the, the cache. I'm, I'm not sure you, you want to see that? Uh, no, you don't want to. Um, so, registries. So that's important. What do I start? Yes, registries I will show in the app directly. So um, the registry they are in the in the in the settings here. You have a you have four um, registries that are pre-configured, or where you, you just have to add the, your your username and password. For Quay, in fact, it's username and a token. But and uh, and if you want, you can add your own registry. So if you have a private registry, just for yourself or for your company, you can you can do that. Um, and when when you have added one registry. Later on, you can, if the image name that you have, so if you built an image, if the name match the registry, then you can, you can, uh, you can push it. For example, uh, this one, my custom image, uh, I can push it to a kind cluster, but I cannot push it to my registry. But this one, which is a, a, which has a, a name that corresponds to my Quay.io registry, I should be able to push to the registry. And then when I push to the registry, I have I can uh, select between tags. Obviously, uh, I take the tag that corresponds to the registry, and then. I haven't tried this today. Does it work? Does the network work? Uh, 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 yeah, I'm happy. It did work. Um, so configuring, you can, you can configure a registry. How many time do I have still? Five minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you can push an image. We have done that. And next topic, five minutes to talk about pods. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
That's Levitin. Okay. Um, I have my pod. I delete my pod. Up. Let's be crazy. So uh, I have Redis. I select two pods. So to explain pods, as I live in Belgium, I was thinking of a, of a metaphor uh, that is implying fries. You want it? It's, so in Belgium, you have two categories of people. You put the sauce on your fries, or you put your sauce on the side of your fries, you know? But frites sautafar, they call it. And pods, it's a little bit the same thing. Is uh, when you have containers that ex are exposing ports, um, you want that the application is exposing the port to the user, that's good. But the database, you don't want to expose the port of the database to the user. You want to keep it in an in internal network. Same thing in your, your fries. You expose the fry to your mouth, but the sauce, uh, it's just for the fries, not for your mouth. So, but you cannot do it with fries. So, you select your pods, and then you select the port that you want to expose externally. And uh, the port that are, that are only required internally, you don't expose them. And there he is. He's working. Perfect. So, uh, in the logs, you see that you have the logs of your two containers, the Python app modified and the Redis modified, okay? And, um, and uh, can you search in the log? No, not today, okay. Um, you have, you can inspect the, the, the pod, okay? And here you can search in it, and you can see that it's exposing port 508080. Good. And you have you can uh, copy and paste your the the YAML to create it uh, from code somewhere else. Okay. So that's already cool. And you have the possibility to deploy to Kubernetes. That's for this afternoon. And uh, uh, here, if you go, that's, that's where the application is still young. Because if you want to connect, so now you want to, to see the app of your pod, you don't have access to it uh, in this screen yet. OK? It will happen. But we have not done it yet. But in the summary, you can, oh, I click on it too fast. Uh, in the summary, here you have the name of your containers. You have three containers. So there is one secret container that you didn't choose that happened here. And if you click on the container name, aha, secret, uh, then you are on the container. And this time, you can open the browser and we have the application and uh, the increment is stored in the Redis database. So that's cool. And uh, if you, so you have the, you, have, uh, you can see your logs, that's good. And uh, you, can see that the container, the container that I selected are now stopped, so I don't have any more container in the, in the running outside of the pod. And my pod has been created, and my pod has three, three con containers. And the last of them is a, a, an infra container that's, that's ruling them. And 
for these logs, you don't see things. I can show you. You can. interact with uh, with the the Redis database here how many seconds it's over huh? <coughs> so I will finish that and then questions so you can uh, select containers to run a pod. We've seen you can generate the YAML to run a pod. Questions or the last demo is uh, you, you use the YAML and you start a pod. Hello, uh, thanks for the presentation. I'm already using Docker Compose. So far, I'm not convinced. What are you main three selling points that You can still use uh, Podman Compose. Uh, uh, you can still use Docker Compose after that. Okay, so that's that's it's not, not a. Point. You're just no, no. Yeah, can still work with the same stuff. Yeah. It's okay. Yes. It's uh, so when when you when you do uh, the doc, uh, Docker Compose, you cannot uh, send the thing to Kubernetes. Kubernetes will not understand Docker Compose. Okay. So that's the that's that's the first point. Is that uh, you have something that works on development. But then if you want to put it on production, the Docker Compose is, is not working. So you, you have at some point, you have to do the translation from Docker Compose to something that is Kubernetes YAML. And that's, that's, where, that's where, what we are trying to do is that this translation is as, as uh, painless as possible. So, and, uh, and, because so you can you can use a Podman desktop with Docker. Uh, I failed to install Docker this morning, but uh, that's another question. Uh, you can so you can use Podman desktop with Docker, and then you can use uh, Compose with Docker, and then use Podman desktop to take the state of your containers to generate pods or to generate kubeyml, because you cannot run pods on. Uh, on uh, Docker, that's the problem. But you can or you can uh, you can uh, generate the the YAML and then run the YAML into uh, Kubernetes. And uh, and uh, uh, so we support Podman, we support Docker, we support Lima at the at this moment. So three different uh, container engine and. Uh, for Kubernetes, so we, we support remote Kubernetes engine uh, that are in your kube config, and we, we have more support to help you install OpenShift local, help you install kind, and connect to the developers and bugs. And that's uh, what I will develop this afternoon, this kind of stuff. So, uh, the point is, do you want to deploy to Kubernetes afterwards or not? If you don't want to deploy to Kubernetes, you don't need. Uh, if you need to deploy to Kubernetes and that's something that developer need to do and not the ops team, that's a very nice tool to make it is easier. Yeah. Voilà. <coughs> Yeah. 
And, so, and for example, uh, if you want to run, so if you want to run the, uh, the standard, run, so the Docker IO Redis or, uh, or, uh, or Nginx image on OpenShift, for example, it doesn't work. So it, they are, uh, OpenShift is putting constraints much, much higher than Docker. So, um, so containers are running fine in development, and uh, everything is okay, and then you, you push to production, and suddenly the container is not working. So it's to have, to have this, this uh, information, this feedback loop be closer to development, that's a, that's a nice tool. And that's something where um, the usage is different from, from uh, the Docker or Kubernetes extension in VS Code or in whatever editor you are using. So it's not exactly the same usage. The, the, the Kubernetes extension is not something that brings you from, uh, from container to Kubernetes. Yeah, that's a tool that just, just to do this transition. To do this, uh, I, I, I work on containers, I have everything that I, uh, that I want on containers, and that what, what do I need to do to, um, to move uh, to, the, uh, to, the, to the next step? Voilà. Good answer. Perfect. Uh, another question? We have uh, one map for new features we want to add. N new features that are coming? Uh, stability. <laughs> that's uh, for me. That's the most important. So, uh, um, so we have we have been building features like crazy in the the last last month. So the the project is uh, uh, one year old since uh, February or March. So it's very 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 young, and it was going very 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 fast. So stability. So. Uh, uh, end to end test to, to know that we, when, when we build a new feature, we don't break another one. So that's, for me, that's the most important one. Uh, and then, um, uh, uh, for now, the OpenShift local extension, it's, uh, it's the first iteration. For, the, for Kine also, it's the, it's the first iteration on them. So that's, uh, uh, we discover all, all the edge cases that make uh, things break at some point. Um, I, and, uh, you know, and also things like, now I have my pod running, I want to have the button to, uh, to open my application directly, so to, to have things even more, more simple and less hidden. There are some features that now are, are just, it's here, but you have to know. And I would like it to be uh, to be more 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 simple. And uh, voilà, that's quite a lot already. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, and uh, I know that what is coming now is uh, the um, the welcome page has been uh, reworked because now it doesn't. If you if you look at the welcome page, it doesn't fit in a screen. Uh, um, you know, I have one man that takes all the, all the room, but the rest is. So okay, here yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, I have a big uh, scaling factor to display in a, in a big screen, but uh, this this welcome page is uh, is uh, was okay when there was only one man, <laughs> but now that we have more things, that's uh, that's a problem. Yeah, I just checked. I was right. What? Another question? So maybe a quick one. So what's the, like, the long-term plan uh, for Windows uh, uh, people? To convert them to and make the graphical interface work for them, actually, or let them use the terminal at some point? Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, it's, so the, term, the terminal interface is there. So anyway, we install it. Huh? So you use it, you don't use it. It's your choice. I, I would not choose for people. I'm, I, I, I've been using the, 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 the text interface for years, and I learned things 
about containers by using this app, you know, because there are, there are things that are more displayed. There are things that are also hidden, you know, because choosing to, dis to, 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 uh, to display uh, containers, pods, image, volumes, it's you select what you, you know, you, you, have, you, have, you have some visualization, but for example, there, are, there is no deployment. So in Kubernetes, deployment is even more central than pods, and you don't, you don't see them. You don't see the, the secrets or other things. So there is a selection and a simplification of what you need to know. I find it's really interesting to, um, yeah, to, uh, to enter the machine and to, to say, okay, that's, that's the important point. I will focus on them, and the rest we'll see, we'll see later. But um, I don't know. Uh, Common line and Windows, that's complicated. So I have common line user for years, and now I have cmd.exe, uh, PowerShell, Git Bash, and uh, the, the, some of the commands land in one of the, the terminal and not in the other. It's, it's, it's getting me crazy. So the, the, the terminal experience on Windows is anyway is, is a problem. <laughs> is a, is a just, just, okay, terminal, open a terminal, which one? CMD, PowerShell, Git Bash, something else? <laughs> uh, I, I'm using uh, this, this terminal that has all of them, but you see? It's, uh, what, what, do I, what do I want to, to, to use now? Uh, so that's, that's complex. So this afternoon, I will try to break things on uh, Kubernetes, OpenShift Local, uh, Developer Sandbox, and all of that. And, uh, and it will be fun. <laughs>